Hey everyone, so this is going to be part one of a multi-part series all about the phospholipid bilayer, which is the structure that's going to align our animal cells. So starting with our phospholipids, they belong to the lipid class of macromolecules. Each one is made up of a glycerol and phosphate head, which carries a negative charge. It is polar and hydrophilic. It has two fatty acid tails, which unlike our heads, they're going to be nonpolar and hydrophobic. The tails can be saturated or unsaturated, and the ratio between them is going to impact membrane fluidity. So because they contain both a hydrophobic and hydrophilic region, our phospholipids are amphipathic. This is a term that you want to remember because many membrane components share this characteristic. So when we place these phospholipids in an aqueous environment, they're going to spontaneously arrange into a bilayer with the tails facing inward to avoid water and the heads facing outward to interact with water. This arrangement it is energetically favorable and it forms a phospholipid bilayer, which is selectively permeable, meaning that it's going to control what enters and exits the cell. This bilayer it also allows proteins and lipids to move laterally, which enables a dynamic cell process. It helps to compartmentalize the cell so we can have multiple functions happening simultaneously, and that is something that our prokaryotic cells cannot do that efficiently. So importantly, the bilayer, it acts as a signaling platform. Our molecules, they're going to be embedded in or attached to the membrane. They're going to act as receptors or docking stations for things like hormones, neurotransmitters, and other signaling molecules. So we describe this structure as a fluid mosaic model, which states that the membrane is fluid, which means that it's flexible and has the ability to move, and that it's mosaic. It's made up of a diverse component like phospholipids, proteins, and cholesterol. Membrane fluidity, it is super important for cell movement. It's going to adapt to mechanical pressure and it's going to maintain function despite temperature shifts. And we have three main factors that are going to influence membrane fluidity. First of all, we have temperature. Higher temperature is going to increase fluidity, meanwhile lower temperature is going to decrease it. We have fatty acid saturation, which just states that the more unsaturated tails we have, the more fluid the membrane. And then we have cholesterol. This is a very important component and we're going to cover it more in the next post, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And finally, I just want to make a quick note on its permeability. Our small nonpolar molecules like oxygen gas, they can easily diffuse through the membrane, but on the other hand, our large polar or our charged molecules, they're either going to slow down or be blocked. They're going to usually need help of transport proteins or channels to enter or exit the cell. And that is the intro to our phospholipid bilayer. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share for more science content. Leave your questions in the comments and see you next time.